Peace. I am April Freeman with the Richmond Public Library. I'm here to spotlight urban fiction authors. And today we have the phenomenal, the amazing. Um, <laughs> she's from Virginia, right? Yeah, I'm from Virginia Beach. Yes, we're Virginia, Virginia Beach. And it's Miss Raven Sky. So tell us a little bit about um, how did you become an author, right? And then a, a Virginia author at, at that. Um, uh, where can I start? Um, I think it was my seventh grade teacher. Uh, I tried to find him on Facebook when Facebook first came popular, <laughs> but I couldn't. But his name was uh, Mr. Emery. Uh -huh. And um, one of the first books that we had to read when the school year started was Where the Red Fern Grows. Uh -huh. And before the end, I never tapped into, you know, books and, you know, it just wasn't anything that was promoted in my household. We were TV watchers uh -huh. in front of dinner and all of that stuff. So when I first read that and um, then followed that up with Charlotte's Web, I was like, oh my God, I gotta write a book. <laughs> I don't know what kind of book I'm gonna write or... Uh -huh. You know what I'm a writer, but what I'm a talk about. But I like the fact that I had got lost in the stories, and uh -huh. I got it was uh, 10, 15, 20 minutes. I have long it took me to read it to just escape my world uh -huh. and get into. Um, I was really kind of really, really, really introduced to different races of people uh -huh. through reading books at a young age. So I said, oh, I want this is what I want to do. I want to write books one day. Uh -huh. So. A little while after that, I started writing little short stories, little plays, and uh -huh. and stuff like that, that that I still have to this day. And um, in 2011, I had started writing my first book, A Rumbling VA, in 2009 or 10. Didn't have a clue of what I was going to do. It, you know, Amazon hadn't, from what I understood, I knew, I knew nothing about ebooks uh -huh. or that we could load things to Kindle. And uh -huh. so I just had something sitting. And so when I wrote um, A Rumbling VA, it was just because um, at the time, uh, I was really into uh, urban street lit novels. Nikki Turner uh -huh. and uh, Shannon Holmes. And uh -huh. every Sunday, I was getting a Triple Crown production book and reading it in the eight-hour time frame. So I just had decided I was going to do that. A layoff at my job that I was working, I was working at Dollar Tree Corporate Office at the help uh -huh. desk. Uh -huh. And then um, they had a layoff. So um, I said, okay, this is my, this is my moment. This is yep. it. And I'm going to ride this unemployment until <laughs> I can ride it anymore. Just be honest. Uh -huh. And um, I did. I was like, and then once I had saw how I could make money, uh -huh. pay my light bill, pay my rent, all that stuff off of these books, you know, I went, went crazy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Within the first two years, I had written, I think maybe six, six uh -huh. or seven books. Uh -huh. So how many yeah. books do you have so far in your category, in your catalog? A total of nine. When you write, do writing energize you or it makes you exhausted? Depends on uh, which character and jail in that book that uh -huh. you're holding. Uh -huh. <gasps> Ooh, that was a... a I got to go walk it off and pray and cry and uh -huh. all of those emotions because at one time that was me. I was Angela. I feel like I'm, I'm all of my characters, even the male ones, uh, to an extent. I, I, it's a little bit of me in, every, in, in each and every one of them, even Juju. But Juju uh -huh. is my daughter's favorite character. You know? Are you working on anything new? Actually, I am. Okay. Um, I have taken a, a, a long hiatus. I think it's been like maybe three years since I put my last book out. But um, I'm currently uh, in the midst of two books right now. One of them is called Chocolate Baby. And the uh -huh. other one is called Jungle Laws. Uh -huh. And um, I just haven't decided which one I want to put out first. What is the best way to market your book that you found? Word of mouth. Yeah. I'll Word of mouth. Uh -oh. my, I don't, I don't, um, on my personal, uh, Facebook page, I have a, uh, a, a fan page, but I don't, I, I'm not one of those constant sharing links and all day long. My sisters stopped that 
the uh, first six months of my first book, she called me. She said, if you share that book and that link one more time, I'm going to delete you. But know what? I, I respect that because I get tired of that too. And she was like, and I, you know, and then I sat back and I stopped doing it for a, a week or two. And I was like, oh, oh, okay. I get in there because I see it all day long to the point I started deleting people. Back then, when uh, uh -huh. a couple, you know, 10, 15, 10, well, eight, nine years ago, you couldn't hide people in your news feed like you can now. Uh -huh. uh, you had to either just delete them and be done with it. So uh -huh. I deleted quite a few folks. And that's one of my biggest pet peeves. Like, I have been in several reading groups on Facebook because I really like them. Shout out to I See You if you are watching this. Um, and Kiana, uh, Kiana Drennan, because I used to love her book, uh, Don't Read Me, Read a Book Club, uh -huh. because I'm a reader first. And uh -huh. to, you know, see y'all, it look like a, uh, you know, magazine ad. You go in there some days. Just nobody, how, how you doing? No conversation. Not trying to even get in the mix of speaking with people about whatever the topic is that day. Just mm -hmm. buy my book, buy my book, buy my book, and it's just yeah. ugh, it's annoying. I mean, I don't think um, people are honest with authors mm -hmm. and, and really tell them that you know that's a turn off. Mm -hmm. If you want to guarantee a way for me not to book, and then another thing, befriending somebody on Facebook, and five minutes later, a link in the inbox. Well, not only get you blocked and deleted, but I won't buy your book either because you couldn't even say hello. Exactly. <laughs> During this three years, did you not write because of you a writer block, or you just just wanted to take take a relaxation? Um, it was a little bit of both, but more so is because I was churning out books left and right. Like I said, the first uh, year or maybe a year and a half or two, I had six. Uh -huh. And then I realized that I was losing my love for it uh -huh. because I asked for it. I asked the universe for the ability to be able to stay home and be a full-time author. But when that became my income, it's like, okay, you got to sit down now and write. Uh -huh. And I never want, wanted that to become, I'm going to throw anything on paper. Because who are, who are some of the other people that you read? Um, I've kind of gotten away. Um, just to really uh be honest, I've gotten so far away from Urban Lit because it just isn't. Um, anybody, any genre. I read a lot of self help. Okay. Um, but right now I'm reading uh this guy named Greg Olson. Uh -huh. He's a New York Times bestseller. Uh -huh. Um, and. He has about maybe 10 books. And when I say, oh, just, I've read, I think, maybe eight of them since the quarantine started. And it's two more in his series that I got to get. Uh, Danielle Steele has always been a fan, a favorite of mine. That's always my go-to with a couple of iced tea. That's a go-to. I'm about to say that. You got to have a go-to. But so you said, so, it's, you said it's Greg Owens. You, I should check him out? Greg Olson. Olson. So I should check Olsen. him out. If you have Kindle Unlimited, he has books um in there. I got but, a whole library full of books. We work here. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought for your personal reading, but yeah, Greg Olson, he is a phenomenal, phenomenal, and I like him because he can uh hip hop, I mean hip hop, um, head hop uh in his stories uh -huh. uh, to where he can go from first person to, to uh third person to second person and uh -huh. it's just so engaging. But um, I'm gonna say somebody I absolutely love, and I, I I don't understand how she hasn't made NYT yet, and that's Takira Allen. She's oh, my oh, absolute yes favorite. I absolutely love her, and she is so downplayed. Like I mean, a lot of people in the under under like me and you, we know about her and we rock with her. Right. But a lot of people that's like in the like when I be seeing my patrons coming to the library and I tell them about them, they act like they don't know. Like who? What? what? Girl, that girl is fine. <laughs> Let me ask you this last question before we leave, because I gotta go okay. back to work. Um, how <laughs> how important is the public library to you, your <laughs> fans, and this and you know the community in general? Um, I think the public libraries are vital 
because that's how people get introduced to you accidentally sometimes Mm -hmm. you know somebody could just walk past uh the cover and Mm -hmm. see uh a rumbling va and be in va like oh wait a minute hold on Mm -hmm. and you may only have one of those books they Mm -hmm. read the first one oh my god i love this let me go find her Mm because i've had people find me on facebook like that Mm -hmm. um so that the libraries are very important. Um, I wish that uh, uh, the libraries could um, expand more. Yeah, I don't know. It's been a. Uh, I haven't been to a. Uh, well, I haven't been to your location, but you know, I don't like to go in places and see. Okay, we got our section right here. Why we gotta have this five shelves, uh-huh. and why we can't be blended in with books because that's exactly. what it is. Exactly. So, but it's still important. It's yeah. still important.